From the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line on Wednesday night. I am Ben Hall. Very good show tonight, talking all about metro schools. There is certainly a lot to discuss. We had a lot of snow days, so metro schools received a waiver for those days. We can talk about how that happened. Budgeting is going on right now. Several legislative issues to discuss. Common Core is always a big deal. We also want to talk about pre-K. So a lot to talk about as far as metro schools are concerned. We hope you will join us. Call in with any question you have, 737-PLUS, 737-7587. Happy to have with us Jay Steele, the Chief Academic Officer. Thank mm -hmm. you for being with us. And Phyllis Phillips, Director of Pre-Kindergarten Programming. Thank you also for being with us. And Jay, let me start with you. A lot of snow days, <laughs> a lot of kids out for a long time. My kids actually wanted to go back to school, <laughs> which is That's astounding. <laughs> but how, what kind of impact has that had? What has what that meant? Yeah. It, unfortunately, this has been um, uh, very unusual weather for us. We've missed 10 days uh, since January 1st, and um, that, that has put us behind. And, and, and I know that um, as we go into the season of, of, of the assessments and TCAP and end of course exams, that that has put an undue burden on our teachers and our students as they're, as they're preparing for that. Especially kids, uh, our EL students and, and kids of poverty, they need consistent uh, instruction on a daily basis. And any break in that instruction does harm the children. And so, number one, we got a waiver. Yes. So. That's two days where we don't have to go. And I'll ask you about that in a minute. But are there things that this has made us think differently about? Is there some way we could have instruction at home during these school days? Would that even work? I mean, are as a result of all of these misses, are there things we're thinking about for the next time. Yes, absolutely. We had some very proactive teachers uh, that knew this last storm was coming ahead of time and prepared what they called snow packets and sent mm -hmm. home. So I applaud those teachers for thinking ahead. Um, we, we're exploring things like the, techno the use of technology. We have a learning management system called Blackboard that's in our high schools and in our eighth grade. Uh, I know that next year in our budget we have proposed to expand that down to the fifth grade. Uh, so a, a blended learning approach where teachers can design uh, units of study, post videos and blogs and, and, and chat rooms for kids to discuss uh, curriculum issues in a safe and, and controlled environment so that they could access that curriculum 24-7 and teachers could log in from home and post things and kids can log in from home. One of the issues with that is uh, about 50% of our kids have access to the internet at home. So that means that 87,000 kids would have to have laptops and would have to have access at home for it to be truly fully effective. Um, but I, I think that's a problem that we as a city should address and we can, we can solve that if we all work together. Um, but it is an opportunity for kids to keep the learning moving and teachers to keep that connection with kids using technology. Testing is such a big part of, of everything now. Districts mm -hmm. are judged on it. Schools are judged on it. Principals, teachers, mm -hmm. everyone judged on the mm -hmm. testing. So what impact has missing those days? Where does that put us as far as the testing goes? Yeah. Well, as I stated earlier, I know that the teachers are very concerned about that and the principals. So we've asked the principals to really um, re-examine every activity that's planned for the rest of the year and protect that instructional time at all cost. Um, maybe there's some field trips that aren't essential to the curriculum or aren't tied or connected to the curriculum. Really look at everything that we have planned and let's maximize the instructional time in the, in the classroom. And I know this is a more of a board discussion, but there was some discussion about, all right, we're a big district. Maybe roads are bad up in Jolton and they're mm -hmm. not bad down in another part of the, the county. Could we open some schools and leave others closed? Yeah. Would, would you like to see that? Is that something that's really a possibility? What, what about that? Well, I think it's worth discussing, and I know that uh, several of our board members um, are beginning that conversation. Uh, they're hearing from their constituents that, that they would like that topic broached. Um, it, it does pose a lot of problems with human capital, with payment of support staff. We have so many of our children that don't go to their zone school, so they could live in Jolton and go to Meg's Middle School. Um, so it's not an even playing field just because the roads in Jolton are you know, ice covered and the, the roads in East Nashville are not. There are kids that still live in Jolton that go to school in East Nashville. So there, there's several possibilities there, but there's also some issues we would have to work through. And the waiver, the two-day waiver, mm -hmm. what is that? 
how unusual is that? Is that because there was a state of emergency yes. and, and that's the only reason we could get it? What? Why did you apply for it? Why did Metro apply for it? And what you know? How unusual is it? Well, when our calendar was um, developed for 2014-15, it had five built-in days for inclement weather, and um, six six additional days listed as potential makeup days. So one of those was President's Day, but that was an actual bad weather day anyway. Um, so that it, we were able to make up. Where today we made up our first one. This was a three-day intercession. So we have kids that are going Wednesday, Thursday. And Friday, and then the state allowed us to um, um, do the waiver for the um, the emergency time. The the time that that happened before was the flood, I think, back in 2010. So we've done that before. Uh, so the state turned that that waiver request within or around within 24 hours, and we were able to notify our parents that we would only be making up these three days. I know a lot of parents were. We're happy about that. Yes. I mean, the instruction time is important, but sometimes at the end of the year, when you yeah. keep adding on days, that becomes difficult. Yeah. And we chose not to add on days at the end of the year because we wanted as much instructional time before the TCAP assessments and the end of course exams. Adding a day at the end of May, um, we just didn't feel was the best for our kids or for our teachers. Now, as far as pre-K, bring you in, Phyllis, and then we're going to start okay. taking calls. You're on the line. Hold on if you want to call. There's a the number. Um, okay. We've seen a push. Dr. Rogers has been on the show. Very important to him, pre-K. Mm -hmm. where, where are we going um, as far as pre-K is concerned in, in the district? This is such an exciting time to be in our district and in Davidson County. Uh, we have a uh, director of schools who truly supports pre-K. We have a school board who is supporting pre-K. And we have leadership at the district office that's supporting pre-K. We are going in the direction of raising the quality of pre-K throughout the entire district. And in doing so, we're looking at uh, what well, we started this whole process last year with uh, adding three new early learning centers. These early learning centers are just geared for pre-kindergarten students. We chose these sites that uh, now house our um, pre-K classrooms in areas that the buildings were underutilized and they were easy access for parents to bring their children to and from pre-K. And so now we have these buildings that are uh, wonderful places for learning because the entire staff has a uh, early learning background. Uh, the teachers have uh, uh, a wealth of experience in pre-K. Our directors there have a wealth of experience in pre-K. Uh, the services and the environment are all surround uh, are all based upon early learning. We have a wonderful partnership with Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt comes in and uh, they uh, help assess our children and looking at uh, uh, program improvements so that we're looking when, you, when we talk about raising the quality district-wide, well we really want to know what that quality looks like and Vanderbilt is helping to formulate that for us through their observations and uh, discussions with our, with our teachers and our uh, students and that's giving us information back that we can take district-wide to improve uh, pre-k all across our all across our district. Dr. Register has been on this show big supporter of pre-k. We've had mm -hmm. lawmakers on this show who are not who say mm -hmm. um, it's not the best use of money. Mm -hmm. For those people who question it what do you say? You're on the front lines. What, what do you say? And, and this is uh, I would have to say talk to our parents who have experienced pre-k in our system talk to our kindergarten teachers who have children who have been through pre-k programs talk to our teachers who see the growth from when children come in at the beginning of the year and to, and where they are at the end of the year you will hear uh, the most positive comments you'll see the uh, the growth in children and I just wish that some of those people could be in classrooms and actually see what's going on and see the learning and see how children are growing. The critical time, and as chief academic officer, I guess you know this obviously, mm -hmm. the critical time is that one of them is that third grade yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And so can, can it be proven that there is a benefit to a kid by the time he's in the third grade who's had pre-K? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can find research that will support pretty much any point, but um, the majority of research does show that the kids who have that pre a quality pre-K background, mm -hmm. and that's important because if it's not a quality pre-K e right. experience, mm -hmm. then you're not you're not going to see the academic achievement. But if it is a, pro a quality pre-K program and it's followed by pro quality kindergarten through third grade, you're going to see those kids achieving mm -hmm. at a higher level. The one thing I would say to the people who don't support pre-K is not all kids come from the same backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the same uh, educational uh, level of their parents at home, and kids of poverty start off at a disadvantage. Um, we need to level that playing field, and pre-K mm -hmm. is one of the tools that we can do, we can use. Exactly. And Jay, I wanted to add to your point, not only do we look at what's happening at third grade, but let's look beyond on that. Children that have participated in pre-K are more likely to graduate from high mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. are more likely to own homes, are more likely to uh, get uh, career jobs. So there's a lot of uh, positive aspects that uh, that we find that are more long-term than just mm -hmm. at third yes. grade. Okay, all right, we're going to take a break, uh, and then we're going to open up the phone. 737 plus, 737, 7587 if you want to call, whether it's the snow days or Common Core or whatever you want to talk about. Give us a call. That's the number. Take your calls right after this.